The Texas Department of Public Safety has suspended over 1.3 million driver's licenses over an unconstitutional revenue generating scheme that has put millions of Texans in double jeopardy, essentially double taxing individuals for traffic violations. So let's say you get a speeding ticket or God forbid you're caught driving without car insurance. Not only do you have to pay a fine for the original citation, but now they are also forcing you to pay an added surcharge on top of that. And I tell you what, it's expensive too. And it, it, this is totally outside of the court system. The annual surcharges are even more costly than the original ticket fees. And they cost anywhere on average about you know $2,000. And if you don't pay the ransom fee, or if you are late on one single payment, guess what? Your driver's license is suspended. So far, like I said, over a million people in Texas have lost their driving privileges because of this draconian program. But hey, it generates lots of money to the state, and that's what makes it so difficult to get rid of. And joining us now is former Texas Deputy Sheriff and host of Rule of Law Radio, Eddie Craig. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, I tell you what, uh, George Orwell would be proud of the title of this program. It's called the Texas Driver Responsibility Program. It was created from what I understand to generate money for medical centers and roads while encouraging safer driving. So far, the state of T Texas has tried to collect $1.8 billion worth of surcharges, but more than 60% of the amount billed has gone uncollected. What do you know about the program and what are people doing to repeal the program? Um, as far as repealing it, that I don't know, but I'm trying to educate people on what this program applies to and what it doesn't. The most, the most important thing to understand about it is that it is completely unconstitutional in how it's being applied to the people of Texas, first off. Uh, what this is, this surcharge is not determined by a jury for being convicted of some sort of crime or any other offense. This is attached after the fact without the jury ever reviewing the money award that is being given to the state through these fees. When you go to trial and face a jury over a uh, traffic citation, for instance, if you are under one of the programs that these fees apply to, like the uh, Financial Responsibility Act, when they collect these fees after a conviction, that fee comes out of monies other than what the jury ruled against you for and what the fine limit in the actual statute is. Now, the important thing also to understand about that is that not only do these relate only to those people that are engaging in transportation, but these assessments of fees without a judicial determination of guilt in relation to those fees being determined by a jury or by a judge would be a bill of pains and penalties under any constitution in the land. And those are specifically prohibited here. Well, I'm just, else. I'm just shocked that this thing got, you know, passed to begin with. And, and it's been a program since it was effective in 2003. But there's there are people that I've talked to and that I've read about who are still paying fines 10 years later. There was a woman. She was a 28 year old mother who was driving her sister car. Her sister had just passed away. She was driving her sister's car. She got pulled over. The car was not insured. So she paid the ticket. Right. She paid the ticket right away. But then months later, she found out that there was these surcharges that she was unaware of. Her license was suspended and uh, she was a, a pizza delivery person. She lost her job. And she is since this time has dumped thousands of dollars of trying to get her license back and just added charges from her original ticket 10 years ago. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. This is one of the things about the Texas legislature giving over to a third party uh, collection agency these fees. The Department of Public Safety is the specific state agency in Texas that is given authority over these fees. The way the statute is written and the system is set up works more or less like this. Once a citation has been issued to an individual, if that citation involves a charge to which one of these types of administrative fees applies, 
30 days after that ticket is written and filed with the court, that court will then send the notice to the Department of Public Safety to levy those fees. Even if the person has never even been to trial in the matter or even been convicted, you will spend a lot of time and effort trying to get the DPS to withdraw those fees, even if you win the case or the charges are dismissed, they've already levied them against you and you've never been convicted of anything. This is just another underhanded way of doing civil asset forfeiture, except it's limited strictly to your money. They don't care who they're harming with this program. They don't care that it's being illegally applied to the general public when it is specifically limited by law to only those people engaged in the commercial occupation we call transportation. It was never meant to be applied to the general public. But even applied to those that agreed to it through accepting a license to engage in a business, it is still a denial of due process. It is still a bill of pains and penalties that is outlawed by the state constitution, the federal constitution, and every other constitution. Well, I Everything think, about this program is illegal. Absolutely. And I, and I think this quote says it all. This was at the the Texas House Committee on Homeland Security and Public Safety where Representative Joe Pickett, he's a Democrat from El Paso, here's his quote, here's the reality. We are the government and we're not going to give up the money. So basically what they're saying is this is generating billions of dollars for the state of Texas, even though it's illegal, they're just, they're not willing to give it up. Absolutely, and that representative right there should have been charged with treason and immediately arrested. He confessed to that in open session in front of two or more witnesses. That's treason. You know, this, this they, reminds they me. They charge him with that. This, this whole thing reminds me of not only Redcoats, but I, I can I picture a mob boss going into a neighborhood, uh, a neighborhood stores and asking for protection money. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, how is this any different from a mobster stealing money from innocent civilians? It, it's not, but it's not even under the guise of protection. It's you're going to pay us or we're going to burn your house down and, and destroy your family and your ability to earn a living. We don't care if we offer you anything in return. You're just going to pay us. And that's essentially what it comes down to. We now are, our government is now controlled by a bunch of thugs, thieves, and crooks of every level and magnitude you can imagine. They're no longer representatives because by the very definition of a representative, they have the power to represent you which means the limit of their authority is the same limit that your authority would be. If I can't go to my neighbor and demand that they pay me a fee just because I want one, then neither can my representative. And calling yourself government does not make the crime any less a crime. That's well, the part they don't seem to understand. And I tell you what, this hits close to home for me because I'm experiencing this firsthand myself because I got pulled over in a truck that I was driving that was not insured. I was hit with the surcharge. I have to pay $2,000 in installment payments for three years. And guess what? If, if I miss a payment or if I'm late on a payment, it says my license will be suspended. So I'm seeing it firsthand for myself. Yeah, those, those fees never applied to you to begin with, nor did the license requirement, which we've discussed before on the show. Uh, in fact, I've got a new set of motions I'm doing now that exposes this when you're taken into court and forces the court to have to admit on the record or show that they're not going to play by the rules regardless of what they say, kind of like what this representative admitted he's going to do as a representative. That shows unequivocally that this entire thing is a racket. It, it's been a racket from day one because no one knows how to defend themselves in these courts that don't play by the rules to begin with. Well, that's then right. they and turn you, that, around that, and throw key. you in jail when you don't pay. And that's key right there. Nobody knows how to defend themselves. Eddie Craig, Rule of Law Radio, last question. We're almost out of time. What do we do to fight this? We need to be suing everybody involved, the Department of Public Safety, the agencies, the legislative members, they can declare immunity all they want. They don't have immunity for violating the Texas Constitution or the federal Constitution. That's they right. should know that by now. That's right. All right. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Look forward to having you back again soon. Thank you.